Hello, my name is Becky Frank and I'm making this recording for Excelsior Classes. Today I want to tell you about an amazing moment in American history. I want to tell you about the storm that saved Washington, D.C. This uh, story takes place during the War of 1812. Even though America had gotten its independence in 1783 with the Treaty of Paris, we were not being recognized as a sovereign country by Great Britain. They continued to interfere with our trade with other countries. They were pressing our sailors into service in the British Navy, and they were assisting the Indians in their resistance to American settlement in the Northwest. And so after we had exhausted our diplomatic options, in June of 1812, we declared war on Great Britain. Um, it was not a unanimous declaration. Some people saw our trade with Great Britain being important despite all the trouble. Um, others just felt we were not prepared for war, which we were not. Our standing army at the time was only about 6,000 men, and our Navy was comprised of 17 ships. So as you can imagine, it went pretty badly for the Americans in the beginning. Um, the good news is it could have been worse. The British were occupied fighting Napoleon in Europe and were not able to devote a lot of energy to uh, the war in North America until Napoleon was defeated in 1814. Once Napoleon's out of the way, they send three armies to North America. One will go to Canada, one will go to New Orleans, and the third will come to the Chesapeake Bay area. Now, President Madison and his cabinet had discussed possible targets in the Chesapeake Bay area, and they all felt that the British would head straight to Baltimore. It was a major port for the region. Um, they discussed Washington, D.C., but they felt it was too insignificant. It was a very small um, town even, only had about 8,000 residents. Most of the government buildings were not even completed in their construction. But the British do head to Washington, D.C. because they see this as a symbolic capture. They feel that possessing and occupying the capital city of America will strike at the hearts of Americans um, and force them to give up this folly of this war. Um, on August 24th, 1814, British troops led by General Robert Ross and Rear Admiral George Coburn meet the Patriots at Bladensburg, Maryland. As you can see, Bladensburg is very close to Washington, D.C. Um, the Americans were led by William Wendell. He was a political general. He had been appointed because of his political connections, not because of any military expertise. Um, but he knew enough to know it was not going to go well for the Americans. Um, probably even more so because President Madison was there observing the battle. And Secretary of State James Monroe jumped right in to help by helping organize the troops. I'm not sure General Wendell appreciated that help. The Americans, though, were not very well trained. They also were not very well outfitted. Many of the soldiers did not have boots. Some of them did not even have flinch for their rifles. Um, most of them had not been in battle before. And once they faced the very well-trained, well-supplied, well-disciplined British troops, most of them are going to just turn around and run. Some of them will not stop running until they reach their homes. Um, it's a stunning defeat in Bladensburg, and it's going to leave Washington, D.C. wide open for the British invasion. Uh, Mrs. Madison was planning one of her um, famous dinner parties. She was expecting 40 guests at 3 p.m. and had the table set and the food prepared. But she hears the British are coming and is urged that she must leave the White House. She does so only after famously saving George Washington's portrait that had been printed by Gilbert Stuart and a copy of the Declaration of Independence that were in the president's house at the time. It's a story for another day. Um, the British arrive in the city, go to the president's house, sit down and help themselves to Mrs. Madison's meal before setting fire to the place. Um, they will, while they are in D.C., set fire to the Capitol Building, the Supreme Court, the Library of Congress, the Treasury Building, and the buildings housing the Department of State and the Department of War. Um, they will also ransack the Office of the Natural, National Intelligencer let me try that again, National Intelligencer newspaper. And um, Admiral Coburn will request that they remove all the C's from the newspaper office so that nothing bad could be written about him once they leave. Um, they're so busy ransacking and pillaging the city of Washington that they do not notice on the afternoon of the 25th that storm clouds are gathering. Um, a tornado will be spawned near the Capitol and will attack 
the British troops as they are in Washington, D.C. Um, the tornado will tear buildings from their foundations, uproot trees, and um, even um, pick two cannons off the ground and they will land in columns of soldiers. Um, they inflicted more casualties on the British Army than the invasion of Washington, D.C. had. Three tornadoes will be spawned that day, although we think maybe they were all part of the same tornado. It's hard to tell back then we didn't have Doppler radar recording everything. Um, and that was followed by two hours of torrential rain, which put out most of the fires. Um, tornadoes in Washington, D.C. are extremely rare. Um, in fact, since 1814 when this happened, only seven other tornadoes have been recorded in Washington, D.C. Um, they may have been spawned by a thunderstorm. It could have been the remnants of a hurricane that came through. Again, we didn't have the weather tracking abilities in 1814 that we have today to, to know exactly why they were spawned or, or how. Um, but the storm cut the occupation of the city to a mere 26 hours. The British are done. Um, they've not seen weather like this. They have not experienced this kind of thing before, and they are leaving Washington, D.C. to carry on their mayhem elsewhere. Um, it was meant to damage American morale. It actually brings Americans together. Um, there's brief talk about rebuilding the city or moving the capital, and Americans decide that we should rebuild um, D.C. Um, the British get to their ships and found out they too have been damaged to some extent by the storm, and this delays their assault on Baltimore, which will take place. Um, in a few weeks, and that is a story for another day, because some amazing things happen in Baltimore as well. Um, even before the Battle of Baltimore, um, the will of the British to fight was waning. Um, in August 19, I'm sorry, 1814, um, negotiations will begin for a ceasefire, and the Treaty of Ghent ending the War of 1812 will actually be signed on December 14th, two weeks before the last battle that takes place in the world. Also another amazing moment for another day. If you want to hear about more amazing moments in American history, you can check out my classes at excelsiorclasses.com. Thank you.